we're now going to talk about transformations of your parabola. So when we write our transformations, they look like this. This is also known as vertex form for a quadratic function. This is vertex form because it's really easy to see the vertex when it's written this way. For this transformation, the vertex is written H, K. So whatever number is here goes there, and then the K goes here. Notice, in this equation, this is a negative H, but right here we just have an H. That's going to play a very important role when we try and find the vertex in our first example. So again, remember, this is a negative h here, but we just want h in this location. So this would be the vertex. The a value here is going to make your graph fatter or skinnier. If the absolute value of that a is greater than 0, then your graph is going to get thinner. If this value is between 0 and 1, in other words, it's a fraction of some kind, it's going to make your graph um, fatter. This h value here moves the graph left or right, and because it's a minus h, it does it in the way that you wouldn't expect. So if this was a positive number, it's actually going to move it to the left. If this is a negative number in here, it's going to move it to the right. So H, it moves the graph right or left. But again, it's opposite the way you would think. Lastly, we have K. K moves the graph up and down. It just does it in the way you would expect. So this is how our graph is going to move based on the different transformations that we have. If we have A here being greater than 0, it's going to make the graph thinner. If we have it between 1 and 0, it's going to make it fatter. H moves it left and right. K moves it up and down. Now, I did tell you that sometimes this graph does not open up. It opens down instead. In order to make the graph open down, A here would have to be a negative number. So if A is a negative number, if A is a negative number, the parabola opens down. So these are the different transformations that we're going to use. Let's do one example to see how our graph is going to change. We are going to graph this transformation. So when we have this example here, we want to see what it looks like compared to this one. Well, first we know that we need to find our vertex. For this example, because the a value that is right there is a 1 and it's positive, we know that this is going to open up. The vertex is then going to be a minimum point. So we want to find the minimum point or the vertex of this. Notice I said the vertex was h and k. So my h value would be here and my k value is over here. So when I find my vertex, I want just this value. Notice again I said this was going to be a negative h, so this was just h. This is a negative 2, so the number I want here is just 2. So 2, 1, that is my new vertex. That's my new minimum value for this graph here. 
So I'm going to go two and then up one. So that is the vertex point for my parabola. Next, what we want to do is we want to find out what this graph is going to look like. So once I have my vertex point, I want to pick a number or two on this side and then on that side so that I can see what it looks like. So from here, we're going to want to make an X and Y chart and then plug in to find our values. So since I'm here at 2, I want to plug in 1 and 0 for X. I also want to plug in 3 and 4. I already know that if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 1. That is my vertex point. What happens when I plug in 1? If I plug in 1 here, 1 minus 2 is going to give me a negative 1. I square my negative 1 to get a positive 1. Then I add 1 and I'll get 2. Next, we want to plug in 0. If I plug in 0 here, this is going to give me a negative 2. I square it to get 4. And I add 1 to get 5. Now remember, we did talk about our axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex point. So for this graph here, my axis of symmetry is going to be right there. That line, since it goes through x equaling 2, is going to be the line x equaling 2. This is my axis of symmetry. We talked about how the axis of symmetry makes it a mirror image on both sides. So if this goes up like that on this side, it'll have to do the same on the other side. So in other words, if I pick these two points right before the vertex, these two have to have the same values. So if I plug in a 3, I already know that I'm going to get a 2. If I plug in 4, I'm already going to get a 5. I know that because my axis of symmetry makes it a mirror image on this side and on that side. So let's plug in our new points. And that is my new parabola. Notice my transformations. It moved it 2 to the right or left. And in this case, again, it went the opposite the way you would think. So it went to the right two units. Then the k value moved it up 1. So from my original graph, it moved up uh, over 2 and up 1. 